All right, inside of Premiere Pro, what I was showing you when I entered into my little workflow sphere here is the fact that Premiere Pro has a dedicated workspace when it comes to color correction to get you started. And this same type of workspace exists in other nonlinear editors as well. In fact, if I go to Window Workspaces and Color, a few things are gonna happen. So one is on the far right-hand side, we're gonna see the Lumetri Color Panel. Uh, this is where we're gonna perform the majority of our corrections on clips for color. Number two, in addition, we have our Lumetri Scopes that appear. And what I was showing but you guys weren't hearing, is that under the settings, we can bring up several scopes for our Lumetri workflow here at once. So here, right now, I'm showing a Parade RGB. And at the top of this menu, if you click to add something like a histogram, you'll notice that you'll get two scopes up here at once. A really handy shortcut is if you double click in the Lumetri scopes, that's gonna reverse which scope is on which side or top and bottom, so to speak. Now, another really handy setting under these settings of the Lumetri scopes is to choose from a series of presets. And when you come down here, at least these top presets are all just singular scopes. So if I go up here and go to waveform RGB, we'll see that individual scope. And if you're new to color correction, this trace is actually representative of this image here on the right. In fact, I can see or make out kind of in the middle of this trace, the, the gentleman and walking across the screen. So while this is reflective of your image from left to right, it is not reflective of your image from top to bottom. So if I were to break down this scope here from around the zero mark, to 20 IRE, which is a measurement of scale. These are your shadows within the image. Anywhere from the 10 up all the way to 80s, 90s is your midtones. And then you have from 90 to 100 your highlights. Now in our Rec 709 workflow, the typical rule of thumb is to not have your highlights breach above 100 IRE as well as don't have your shadows or the deepest shadows go below zero IRE. In many cases, if you're looking for a high contrast image, this trace would be spread out where you would see information in the shadow area, as well as the highlights. And while this shot isn't completely neutral, I can see it is leaning towards that neut the neutral end of things. So how would I perform a correction on this? So we do have continuum tools that allow us to do um, base corrections. But if you're in your nonlinear editor of choice, more than likely you can start to sculpt your correction using the native tools. And then after you've done that base correction, explore continuum for that finalized look that you would send out. Depending on where you come from, maybe you are a video editor, uh, who's primarily worked in a bunch of applications. Inside this list of tools here, there's going to be a part to the Lumetri color panel that you'll feel more comfortable versus others. So basic correction, I draw a parallel to, in some cases, um, a Lightroom workflow when it comes to Adobe. The creative panel is something that allows you to add quick looks onto your clips, not to mention perform some stylistic adjustments in terms of color in both the shadows and highlights. And then we have tools for curves. Uh, if you're used to Photoshop, this might be a place to go to. If you come from an nonlinear editor, you're gonna be able to work with your color wheels and then secondary corrections as well as vignette. So in terms of just a contrast adjustment, when it comes to the initial correction, I would come more than likely start to do, construct this either in the basic correction section or my color wheels. And I'll show you two ways of doing this. If my goal was to expand the contrast in this image, first of all, I'll come here and in the basic correction, lower the blacks, paying attention to 
the scope here on my left to see the effect and to make sure that I don't clamp anything. I'd also be paying attention to what's in the image. So a big question here is, is there a lot of deep shadows or blacks in the image that would result in having a lot of deep shadows? The next part of the adjustment would be primarily in the upper part of the graph where I would increase the highlights. And then I would make a general overall stylistic decision if I wanted to have that shot either brighter or lower it in terms of exposure. Now, the one thing about corrections, uh, when it comes to these sliders or it comes to using your color wheels, is there's a lot of push or pull. When I adjust the blacks, this will have, having mostly an effect on the lower part of this trace, it is manipulating parts of the midtones and even parts of the highlights in certain instances. When I adjust the whites, it's the exact same thing. We'll see that it is making a subtle adjustment to the shadows while still having an influence on the midtones of the actual shot. So when you go through your color correction process, especially those contrast adjustments, usually you'll take a slider, you'll pull it one way, make an adjustment to another slider, and then have to go back to readjust to get the look that you want. And then through this process, it's always good to perform before and afters. So with the Lumetri color panel, this would involve toggling the effects bypass here on the top left to turn this on and off to see if your corrections are going well. And I can see just by these subtle adjustments, I've added to add a little bit more contrast into this clip. To show you just a different way of doing this, I'm gonna reset this entire basic correction. And you should note that in the basic correction tab, you can use a an auto feature here for Premiere Pro to try to expand the contrast, not to mention exposure in a shot by simply placing this magic wand button. And not only is it gonna correct contrast in the shot, but also try to perform a color balance if there's any type of color cast in your shot. And in most cases, depending in some shots, this is gonna be all you need in terms of your basic correction to increase the contrast and then get a general look to start with. So that's something that we can use here. And another mention is for any of you guys who are shooting on DSLRs and using a log based format or even a color profile, you may have access to um, different LUTs or lookup tables that are provided by the camera manufacturer. And Premiere Pro has made it extremely easy for you to instead of doing your own base correction, either choosing from a preset input LUT, so you can see some here from Alexa and RE-based cameras, or you can browse your system to then import the LUT that comes from that camera manufacturer, so you have now sculpted your base look. So we've spent a little bit of time in the basic correction, um, and I do want to do a comparison to color wheels, as this is another thing that um, nonlinear editors use quite a bit in multiple applications and what those contrast adjustments might look like here. If I start to lower this slider on the left of the shadows, this is in fact making an adjustment in a slightly different way than those sliders. In, in fact, it's affecting some the blacks and, the and some of the shadow level combined. And if I now go here to the highlights, I can see there that I can expand the contrast in my image, specifically using these color wheels. The color wheel itself also gives us uh, what's known as a comparison view, which is a really handy feature uh, that's built inside your program monitor, where if you toggle it on, you'll be able to preview the before and after shot, allowing you to provide match-based color corrections. So in fact, if you've made an adjustment to one clip, or you want to take the color of one clip and apply it to the other, you can simply apply the match to try to get um, a match look between two shots. So that's an additional feature that's built into the color wheels. When I started to make these Lumetri-based adjustments, it's really important to note that Premiere Pro's workflow 
will add an effect onto the clip that's selected and place it inside effect controls. So me just making changes in this Lumetri color panel all gets stored on the clip. And we, in, in order to remove this entirely, we would just simply select the effect and then delete it from the clip. But that is what happens when we make our initial adjustment. And a cool part is we can continue to build multiple Lumetri effects to get desired looks inside of Premiere Pro. The final thing that I'll mention about color correction, the final few things when it comes to the Lumetri panel, is the fact that it does ship with a bunch of creative base LUTs as well as input LUTs. So we can consider input LUTs giving you a base grade while your creative LUTs, such as this Fuji Eternal LUT that I selected, is giving you a desired look based on a certain film stock in some cases or a film look. And there's several here that's built in um, based on different processes such as cross HDR here that we can easily apply to the clip. What's one cool thing is when you access this creative panel, you can go and click between all of these various looks as you see I'm doing here. And once you find something you like, let's just say it's this SL Gould Orange, by simply double clicking this look, it's now applied to your shot. So those are these creative base LUTs that are built inside of Premiere Pro. And it, it just so happens that you can actually use a mobile application that's offered to you from Adobe called um, Adobe Capture. Inside of that app, there's one called Looks. And you can take a picture of something and then create your own LUTs from the colors that are in that picture. It's pretty cool. And it will sync directly into Premiere Pro by applying a Lumetri based color effect with that creative LUT already applied. So this workflow of those creative LUTs can basically take place by capturing it with your phone using Adobe's technology. Besides our basic corrections, our creative and our curves, we can go further with Premiere Pro by doing secondary base corrections. Um, and all Premiere Pro effects have a basic mask and tracking workflow where we can limit the effect to a specific region of our frame. When it comes to uh, masking and tracking though, one thing to mention is that when you track a shape or a clip, it's gonna limit um, it's going to add a keyframe at every single frame during that track, uh, which could be undesirable if you have more complicated masks within your scene. So in talking about Lumetri color for the first little bit, one thing that I find myself doing um, in, all NLL, in all NLEs that I do color correction processes in is to do an initial grade sometimes with the internal tools and then use Continuum to build on those tools with more features that go beyond the capabilities of your NLE. What that might look like in this specific workflow is for me to go to the basic correction and do an auto base correction on the clip that I'm over right now. In fact, let me also just get out of this comparison view so we can see the clip. And I'll, again, I'll just apply reset this entire shot and apply an auto-based correction. And by simply making a contrast adjustment as well as some leveling off of the tint and temperature in my scene and an increase in saturation, I've got a base look. And now I can take that further by applying additional looks using some of the continuum based tools. So where I would find these is in the effects panel. Now, one way to bring up that effects panel is to press shift seven on your system. And that's gonna bring up all of the effects that you have inside of Premiere Pro. If we wanted to just focus on the effects tab, if I press the tilde key, I could make this window full frame temporarily. So that's to the left of the one and see all of the categories that ship with BCC. For color correction in particular, I would suggest exploring a few different categories, but one is color and tone drawing your attention to any effect that has a plus symbol here. We also have a category here called film style, which is going to give you a more filmic look and something that we're going to explore right away. As well as a category for 
grads and tints, as well as image restoration. Uh, one great effect when it comes to uh, smoothing out someone's skin or working with uh, people who are in shots is using Boot, uh, Beauty Studio to pull out a really quick and easy face mask, which we'll get into in a little bit. All right. In looking at the effects, I think the first one that we're going to preview will be in the color and tone section. I'm going to grab this effect here called BCC Grade. Now, once you apply a continuum based effect in any host, so we have our, again, our base Lumetri color correction in this case, and I'm looking to apply the stylistic look specifically with the BCC plus grade effect. In order to see what this effect has to offer, rather than making adjustments to these basic sliders, the best thing to do is to click on this effects editor badge. This is gonna bring us into a separate window called the effects editor, where on the left-hand side, we're gonna be able to preview a ton of different presets that are available based on specific types of films. So here I can see one for 2001 Space Odyssey. We can see the result that it's, it's happened to my clip here. And the best part is that these looks get applied, these grades, after I've already done my initial color correction. And I'm able to see what is possible with just a basic, an adjustment in uh, adjusting the temperature, tint, and different other parameters that are built in to the grade-based effect. When you start to see some of these presets, keep in mind at the top left here, um, we could make some of these or favorites, and then from that, isolate our favorite effects for later use. And I'll get in how we can save that here in a second. Now, once an effect is applied, in this case, I'm gonna scroll down and I'll settle on a once upon a time in America based effect. We see the preview of that effect here in the middle of the viewer. But note, if you want to or are curious what your original image looks like, we can do an A and B comparison. So by simply clicking on this button, I'm able to see what the effect does with a color look. Let me just show another one so we can clearly see that uh, being shown through this live stream here. So on the top is the preset that I've applied and on the bottom is the clip that I sent over into the effects editor. Besides A and B comparisons, we also have the ability to do a vertical split where right now I can see my original image on the left and the other image on the right with the actual preset, a horizontal split. And the best part is if you're unsure of which split to use, one really handy thing built in is if I drag this slider up and then start to drag it left, I don't even have to choose between the two. I can simply switch between that horizontal and vertical slider. A really nice feature rather than having to try to do that manually with the button at the top there. Another thing we can do specifically with our viewer is actually take a screenshot of our work in progress. So if I selected this preset, the master and commander, and decided to make a further adjustment when it comes to contrast and maybe upping that saturation a bit because it was lowered too much, right here at the top is a little camera icon that allows us to store still. Now, if I do an AB in comparison, here's my original shot and here is that preset that I have changed and manipulated. But if I decide to choose another preset right now, say I want to check out the Peggy Sue Got Married preset, and I'm curious what that look that I was just playing with is in comparison to this and the original, I simply click on this little screenshot here and I get a three up comparison. So there's the still that was stored, the original clip, and now this shot specifically with the Peggy Sue Got Married look. Since I am a fan of this original still, I can continue to work or choose one of these to work with, but I'll head back up to the, and choose another look here, bring up the brightness, 
and make some adjustments over here to the parameter. One good thing with anything when it comes to the effects editor workflow is you can save your own presets and we'll get into that in a little bit, but any adjustments that you make to a preset, I would get in the habit of saving it by simply clicking on this create custom preset button at the top. One thing that it does is, first of all, if you ever go back into the effects editor, you will have a preset that you can then apply to an adjustment later that could affect other clips within another sequence. But that preset itself is also cross-platform. So say that I'm doing some initial base corrections in Premiere Pro, but my overall sequence happens to be finalizing its grade inside of DaVinci Resolve, you could send the preset that you've saved or that look that you want over to the editor as long as they have Continuum on their system. So definitely something to look at, which I think is a really powerful part about that, the overall color correction process when it uh, deals with Continuum itself. So I'll apply this and just so that we can take a look to see inside of Premiere Pro, we've got our base Lumetri color look here, followed by the BCC plus grade effect the preset that we chose and the subtle adjustments that we made with the properties inside of the effects editor. And if you need to make further adjustments, just note that you can also do that right here inside of Premiere Pro. All of those parameters that I saw up on the left-hand side also exist here inside your host. So we've got the hue, saturation, brightness slider, as well as other properties under specific for shadows, midtones, and highlights. You'll even see that we have additional properties to some of the sliders that are available in Lumetri Color. So overall, this is gonna be a great complement to doing your base correction with Lumetri and then adding a stylistic look with something like Grade or a few of the other plugins of, of the other effects that I'm gonna mention here in a second. So let's hop into a new sequence. In fact, I'm gonna go really quickly over to my assembly workspace. This is one of my favorites inside of Premiere Pro, mostly to do with the reason that we get just a lot of real estate here for our uh, program monitor, not to mention can see the timeline clearly. It clears out some of those windows. And I'm gonna hop over uh, into a new sequence here just with another clip that I have, where I already have a basic color um, correction made onto the clip, but what I like to explore different styles. So you've got your color and tone style, and you can just see that some of these effects um, are simple tools such as low contrast that you can use for color correction, but we then have an entire category that will allow you to do color correction methods based on various film styles that you should totally check out. Some of those are based on processes like bleach bypass, where we'll automatically get looks that will look like bleach bypass um, film where they've skipped the silver retention process. And then we have others. And one of my favorites here specifically is film stocks. To see this, I'll apply this to the clip. Um, and with the clip selected, press shift five to bring up my effect controls, where I'll click on the effects editor to enter and where we can see now another large series of presets. So we saw grade and how many there were, but in this case, some of the presets are specifically named after different film stocks, giving you in many cases, a look based on that film, not to mention realistic grain emulsion, which is just an amazing feature to be added into that color correction process. It also makes it a little bit of different than the color correction workflow that is inside of the Lumetri color panel. With looks, we have a series of categories here that we can take a look at, including black and white films. And color films. So we could just see all of those codec as well as Fuji based presets. And as I click on these presets, keep in mind over on the right hand side, these parameters update and adjust with all of those corrections built in. 
by looking at the parameters as well, we do have a few options here. So this effect includes um, some diffusion controls, not to mention a vignette. And if we're looking to just look at a vignette that's been applied to the clip, uh, and those properties are down here at the bottom, we can turn on that look and then start to adjust the actual event, uh, vignette just looking at that matte source here or any distortion or changes that we make to it at the bottom of the parameters properties list here. Now the same thing exists for the diffusion mat where we can simply view that and at the bottom of these parameters also have a control for adjusting diffusion and seeing it update uh, specifically here in this view. I'll go back up here to my output and there we can see the diffusion that was applied to the clip is rather strong. But at any point in time, uh, there's a few different ways that we can go about resetting unwanted changes that we've done to a clip. One is uh, next to every single parameter is a little square box once you've adjusted it that allows you to click on that icon in order to reset the parameter and start from square one. So if you've ever adjusted a parameter away from its defaults, all we have to do is click on the square icon next to it to reset it. You also have at the very top of the effect, a reset to default option here, which is gonna get you set back to square one and where you can start to make adjustments as well. Included inside of the effects editor when it comes to color correction, a few other things to note are your histogram, your ability to sort of see your color in a new light by specifically looking at this graph over here for your scopes, not to mention being able to see the individual channels of a clip if desired by clicking on this button here at the top. So if I'm looking for specifically making adjustments to the red, green, or blue channel, I could look at those individually, individually and then make a correction based on that. I will apply a code chrome based adjustment and then just to press apply so I can see the way that that looks inside of Premiere Pro. Now, depending on your workflow, uh, I did want to mention two ways of being able to save presets. One that I, I got to, which is the cross platform workflow, but then another way where you're sort of combining Premiere Pro effects with your BCC effects. I'll head back to the original sequence that I was working with. And as you can see, I have a Lumetri color effect and I have a BCC grade. I'm gonna apply one more effect, which can be handy. Uh, it's a vignette effect that is the BCC plus vignette under film style. The reason that I'm choosing this by itself is just that I'll have several more controls specifically for adjusting the vignette here, including be able, the ability to have also a colored vignette. I can play with the opacity of that to make it a lot more subtle, not to mention add a bit of a blur. We can also rotate that vignette uh, specifically to have it stylistically around our subjects. And you may notice that I grabbed on to the on-screen control inside the program monitor in order to have that vignette centered around my subject here to be the main focus. So this setup here, I've got my Lumetri color effect, my BCC plus grade, and my BCC plus vignette. This could be something that I'd like to apply over and over again. Inside of Premiere Pro, there is the ability to click and command click all three of these effects, including any type of keyframes that you add to these properties. And then just right clicking or control clicking on your Mac or your PC and choosing save preset. So here, the best part is through this combination of effects, I would never have to build this again. And in compiling and saving these of inside of Premiere, as well as which you can share with other Premiere Pro editors, this could be a really useful workflow. So I'll, I'll call this base 
contrast with grade and vignette. In some cases, uh, in various uh, BCC plus effects, there are vignettes already built in. So just keep in mind, you might not even have to apply that individual effect uh, depending on which um, effect you choose. If I choose OK right now, inside my effects panel, under, in this case, presets, I should see a new preset specifically for what I just created there. So I'm just gonna type in base, and there we have it, base contrast and grade vignette, which I can easily now apply to another clip here inside the timeline. And while this isn't perfect, I, I do have the ability to, of course, go inside the BCC plus vignette and using those on-screen controls change the position of my actual vignette, but it makes it easy to apply this group of effects and effects to another clip or even to an adjustment layer. Uh, speaking of adjustment layers, all of those looks that I just showed, you can equally apply them to adjustment layers and certain workflows. So it affects several clips at once inside your timeline. There's one other thing to mention uh, specifically about Premiere Pro's uh, color correction process that you can also do um, with Continuum that's worth mentioning. So to demonstrate this, I'm gonna hop over into a new project where eventually we're gonna demo Beauty Studio. Well, what I'd like to do is option click this clip and make a copy of it. It's very typical uh, in a documentary to have one interview shot, which you splice up into various edits and place inside a sequence. So you'll nail down or lay down the pieces that you'd like uh, your audience to hear. And then you would go through a, a process of correcting or color correcting that clip. The interesting thing is when it comes to interviews, all of those clips come from the same source. And the same thing is true here. Both of these shots, they're a duplicate of each other. But even if I you know, chose different segments, we could pretend that these were interview segments here in uh, the Premiere Pro timeline. But, um, and ideally what I'd love to do is design a color look for both of them simultaneously. One way is to do this with an adjustment layer. Another way is to add a correction onto one of the clips, but then apply that correction by pasting the attributes onto another. Yet there is a third way of doing this, which can be quicker as well. And it's kind of like linking two clips. So what a, a, a thing that's not really known inside of Premiere Pro, when you select a clip and you go into effect controls is that there are two tabs or sections. This one section here is, hey, I'm making an adjustment to the original clip. But there happens to be another tab right here called source. And this is like affecting the clip that's inside of your project panel. And the great part is, uh, to demonstrate this, I'll do a search here for film stocks. And I'm gonna drag this film stocks effect instead of on top of the clip into that source tab in the effect controls. Once I release my mouse, we don't see anything just yet, but if you look at the timeline, there's a red line under each of these shots. This is known as a master clip effect. And the cool part, if I go to my effects editor right now and I select a preset here, carbon, I apply that preset to the one clip. I want you to see how it, both of these shots that come from the same source are linked. The great part is in any effect-based workflow, not just color correction, this could be a method that you use to adjust all of clips from a same source, the master clip, to make those adjustments. But specifically to color correction, if you have the same interview shot, but you've spliced it up in the timeline, 
rather than costing, copying and pasting attributes onto all of those several interview clips, use a master clip effect instead. Because the magic is, I'll go back here uh, to effect controls to my source monitor. If I make a change, any change, let's say to the temperature of this shot, the other clip, master clip, is also affected. Really cool workflow when it comes to using continuum-based effects directly inside of Premiere Pro with those master clip effects. I wanted to hop in and show also a demonstration specifically about limiting a color-based effect to a specific region of your image. We talked a bit earlier of how mask tools are built inside every single effect inside of Premiere Pro, but it just so happens that I would just love to give this car a tint. The problem is, while I do have those mask tools available to me, I don't want to tint the front window, the top here, the bag, or the back windshield. With Mocha, that's built inside of every BCC plus effect inside of Continuum, we would be able to accomplish this. So first off, I'm gonna just type in the word tint to add a simple BCC plus tint effect to the shot. Everything becomes affected on the shot. And one really cool thing that I love about this tint effect is that we have this op uh, two different operation modes for tint. So one is normal, the other is tint, which is gonna potentially blend nicer with um, the footage that you're putting on top of it. But definitely check out some of these modes when it comes to tint to get your desired end result. Since, again, my goal is to limit it to this car, at the very top of the continuum effect, I'm gonna click this Mocha Mask button. And it's here where I'm able to now make, um, or create some masks to limit the effect to a specific region. Because this movement, if I played this back here in the shot, consists of some scaling changes, some position changes, and some rotation changes, as I play this back, uh, we can accomplish this pretty simply by choosing which motion options we want involved in the tracking operations but we can even break down this track further. So one thing that I love to do in Mocha is identify very simple planes in the shot. And you'll see that the ground shares the same plane as the car. So rather than create this really complex mask to track, instead, I'm gonna select a larger area that I'm just gonna use as a track. And then I'm gonna connect a more complicated mask to the track that I performed. So to do this, I've got this area where I've identified the ground as a plane. And although the car is here in the shot, it's not moving, so it shouldn't get in the way of this process of tracking. And if I click this backward track button, we can see that Mocha does a great job of tracking the translation, scale, and rotation movement that's inside this clip. So I'm going to let it process uh, this track. It's a 4K clip in this example, which is just why it's taking a little bit longer to buffer. And now that I have a few frames, I'm just going to stop playback. I can see in my Mocha timeline that that track was successful, identified by the little um, change in color purple bar here at the top. So obviously this isn't good to identify the area where I wanna limit the mask. But the magic of Mocha is if I call this layer that's been created, track, and I now come and choose my handy X-Blind tool to create a brand new shape. I'll click on here and start to outline with that shape. I could have also tried the magnetic spline tool to define the region of this car. Okay, I'll make one more point, close this out. And again, I could actually select a couple points in this operation to perfect this mask 
on this one frame. Now the trick, because I haven't tracked this complicated mask, right? If I moved another frame, this mask that I just drew, that layer, doesn't move. But if I select this layer inside uh, my layers panel here at the top and go to layers pro layer properties, I can link this to the track. And now you'll see it moves with that area that I tracked really easily with a simple shape. So there's a few other things I need to do just before I send this back over into the host. And it's best to show you by clicking off of here for a second and seeing what our end results are. So I've saved my Mocha results, but because there's the track layer and this shape, I'm seeing that the mask is limiting the effect to that tracked region as well, which I don't want. We also have a few areas of this clip, the windows again, and as well as the bag on top of the car that we don't wanna be affected by this tint color. So what I'll do is I'll hop back into Mocha and I'll do a few changes. With the track, all I wanna do is I wanna turn it off by clicking on the eye icon. And I'm gonna rename uh, this layer, this layer two, that exists on top of that track, car mask. I can continue to draw additional shapes on this car mask using the X-Spline Plus tool here. And by making these shapes inside the first uh, shape that I created, they're gonna become subtractive masks. So as a note, I'm just dragging over the bag here, drawing over the bag. I'm gonna double click to close that shape. It's attached to the car mask layer. And even better, if I close this out and save these results, I want you to see two things just happened. One, that track that we didn't want to be masked is no longer here. And I've also limited this tint to appear on the car, but that other mask that I created became a subtractive mask that is not having the tint affect it. And I can now continue to go back into Mocha and do my fine tuning here by tracking the rest of this clip, not to mention going to the X-Spline Plus tool where I do different subtractive masks here to get the color that I'd like. So with Mocha and with Continuum, you're just gonna get a lot more leverage when it comes to your ability to perform secondary color correction tasks like this, where we wanna limit color to a specific, a specific region of our frame and we wanna mask it as well. And there are gonna be certain processes or times where you won't necessarily need to even use the full capabilities of Mocha. And for that, you can use your built-in pre Premiere Pro tools, not to mention um, some other masks that are built inside of Continuum uh, through the use of Pixel Chooser. So here, underneath uh, Pixel Chooser, not only do you have the ability to use a Mocha mask, but we could also select something instead like some simple shapes, like a circle, an ellipse, a rectangle, for those processes that require only that and not the full tinting of a car. I just so happen to have another project here called Mocha Mask, which has this entire shot tracked. And keep in mind by playing with the tint values, in this case, uh, with my BCC tint effect, I could also bring down the opacity, not to mention in Pixel Chooser, adjust the feather of this mask to perfect that color correction a little bit further so it blends into the scene or the shot. Now, before we wrap up, we got about eight more minutes here uh, for office hours. I did want to talk about one or other effect um, where I was showing uh, inside of Premiere Pro that master clip workflow. So let me hop over here where I applied if you remember, uh, under the source tab in the effect controls, a BCC film stocks effect that affected both clips here in the timeline that came from the same source. I'm gonna delete that right now and instead show another tool that I use for color correction quite often in my workflow and this happens to be with beauty retouching. 
If we do a search under the image restoration category, or just simply type in beauty, we're going to be able to find beauty BCC plus beauty studio. And I'll apply that to the clip. You may have noticed a bit of softening around this subject's skin. Um, and I'm just going to toggle this off and on so that you can see that it based on certain skin tones, it's trying to remove a, some of the detail inside the shot, not to mention provide you with a subtle blur for various skin tones for when you want to do some beauty correction. Now, all of this takes place um, and the correction takes place not only in this uh, on the lady's skin, but a bit on the background in this case. And we can use, if we take a look under view, uh, the mat, every single pixel that is currently identified with the color white is becoming affected by the small, medium, as small as details here, not to mention master amount smoothing. So to further affect this mat, we can go down to the mat section. And I would suggest in this case, because the colors are slightly different based on the correction of this shot, I'm going to sample two other colors in this woman's skin. And we now have a much better mat to begin with than we did by default. That was simply by changing the view to mat and changing the color A and B. While this isn't getting us exactly where we need to be, there are further sliders down here, uh, including adjusting the black and white of your clip to try to perfect the mask a bit, not to mention playing with the hue softness and the shadow softness to limit this effect as much as possible to your subject's skin. We can even blur a subtle bit, not to mention choke our mat until we're happy with the surface that we would be applying the correction to. In addition to this beauty studio where we have pulled in that face mask, Keep in mind that we could also use Mocha masking to limit this even further or your built-in Premiere Pro mask tools. So I'll change here the output where I can clearly see that that mask itself is limited or the corrections are limited to her face and not the entire screen here from those mask-based adjustments. So this could be based, uh, great for secondary color correction when you're trying to work with people's skin tones and being able to perfect that matte with those two colors can be very beneficial. Just going to check in a second to see if there's any questions or um, notes on content. But I do want to mention that all of these tools that I've showed here today inside of Premiere Pro also work uh, for your Avid Media Composer color correction workflows, your Final Cut correction workflows, not to mention your Resolve workflows. And the great part is once you start to make changes and adjustments to any of these BCC plus effects, if you go inside the effects editor, you can take those changes that we've just done, uh, including those matte changes for the color of this person's skin. And we can save it by clicking on this list icon under create the parameters as a preset. Saving a preset, I'll call this my beauty studio effect. And I'll enter my name here as the author of the effect. And once I press OK, you should see it appear inside your preset section. Again, the beauty is if I right click this preset and I open the custom preset location, this XML file that was created can be imported in all of those applications I just mentioned. So you have someone who has Continuum in Resolve, you can share with them your Beauty Studio effect so that they can maybe perform that final color correction. Thanks so much, Ben. And uh, I really appreciate everyone's time here and joining me for office hours. I'm just gonna go up here to my screen and mention that here, here at Boris Effects, we are very curious to hear what you would like to see office hours on 
um, so that we can help you with your video editing and motion graphic workflows. So feel free to mention in the chat or in the comment section what you would like to see in an upcoming office hours. If you guys have any questions in regards to some of the color correction processes that I've showed you here today and are working in a, diff a different nonlinear editor, I'd be happy to I'd be happy to uh, answer any of those questions now before we end it today. Does anyone have any questions about your color correction workflow? And what did you guys think about the content? Awesome. Well, I really appreciate your time and thank you guys so much for joining me here for this week's office hours and I'll see you sometime soon. Thanks so much.